name is Mark Simmons, and I love cycling. To me, cycling is freedom. I enjoy every moment. There hasn't been a time that I haven't been on that bike that I haven't felt like I was getting something out of it. Another beautiful day to go biking. Oil and chain is very important. That's done. And then. Looks like we're good. Right. So, I go from Clark Kent to Superman. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. Mark Simmons. That's not his real name. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All righty. That's a good. I'm going to have one of my friends help me. Good luck. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. Come back in one piece. All right. I will. <laughs> well, it seems like a lot of people that are doing this ride are trying to challenge themselves for the first like time. It? Anywhere. Um, anywhere. Anywhere. For the Gipper. Have a good one. <laughs> Mark Smart. The main reason why I love cycling is because of the people, the camaraderie, and it's one of the few things you can do in your late 50s, 60s, 70s that you can actually get better with. And there's not a lot of things you can do that in life with. Um, most of my inspiration and a lot of the people I ride with are in their 60s and 70s and they're right where I want to be. It just puts me in a really good space. Great exercise, gets my heart pumping. I just love it. So when people do uh, pull up to my house, they will see a bunch of different flags and different representations of what I believe in and what my husband believes in. We have the rainbow flag and we have the American flag. And I don't think that they are separate. I think they are together. I actually hang them together every day. It means so much to, to me to be an American. I've traveled around the world, and you know, just when you think that maybe we don't have it all or maybe it's not perfect, we do have a lot of things we take for granted. And being gay and being out is definitely one of them. I am so proud of this country. I live in a town where people have been just and support who I am and my lifestyle. I met Mark at uh, an organization called the Gay Activist Alliance of Morris County, GAMIC. And uh, once a month they would have a night where you had a straight, bring a straight friend. And, um, and I had gone with another friend and met Mark through, through that group and uh, a guys. And he was alive, alive, alive. He is, um, he's beauty. He's, uh, he's joy. And, and you can't, uh, you can be having a bad day and sitting on your front porch as I have been and he could be driving by and stop and back the car up with the radio blaring and hop out just to run up to the porch and, 
and spend five minutes with you and you're a different person you're you're positive and he just he's, he's able to turn things around which is probably why so many people are attracted to his friendship and his his company but having known him as many years as I have um, I've had conversations with him um, and seen him at times that we talked about difficult things um, but even things that are challenges even things that are uh, not easy topics uh, he he's still positive he doesn't want to he doesn't see at any point in going back in you know lamenting things in um, in focusing on the negative or what's gone wrong he's He's always about taking any situation, good or bad, struggle or not, and, and looking at what can be done to move forward in a positive way. When I came out of the closet, it was um, a part of, um, as I, maybe I haven't brought this up before, but I was going through a little bit of an addiction problem. And the main part of becoming sober is being honest to yourself and being honest to others. I didn't come out of the closet till I was 29. And I came out because I realized I wasn't living my full life. How I feel being out of the closet and being able to express myself the way I want, is it's very freeing. Um, it's unfortunate that I know people that are still in the closet and you can see that it weighs on them be it drinking, be it not being able to be honest. And um, I feel like I'm actually flying every day that I can go and be who I want. I can walk down the street with a little bit of sass. I can um, listen to the music I want without anybody like, oh, why are you listening to that? That's so gay. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's free being out and being gay. I'm, I'm definitely not a racer. Uh, but I am an endurance, uh, I am an endurance rider. Now, the reason why I've really dug into that is we are, we have just gone through and we still are experiencing a pandemic. Plus, I'm a retiree. So my c whole schedule is kind of clear. And I kind of have that I'm in my head a lot. And when I can go ahead and say, okay, well, I'm going to go out and ride 50, 60 miles today. That takes up a big chunk of my day. That's so much relief that I don't have to think about cleaning out a closet or whatever, whatever. And so I can go out, I don't have to push it, but I can spend a lot of time out on the road. And the one thing I really like about um, doing an endurance ride is that I'm seeing so much of New Jersey that I have never seen before. I've lived here for most of my life approximately 55 years and when I get on that bike and I go to a different town there's things that I've never seen and I'm only talking about 10-15 miles away it's almost pathetic but that's another reason that you know I enjoy riding it's just I see all the little nooks and crannies of New Jersey and I really realize I'm truly in a great state. I do like to do, ride in centuries. It takes a good few months to get ready for a 100 mile ride. I've done a, quite a few. And um, my, first, my first experience with a century ride was during this uh, 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 event where that we were raising money for AIDS. It's called Cycle for the Cause. And it's a 275 mile bike ride over a three day period. That was a big eye opener because I never thought I could do that. But the experience was great. It motivated me. You're with 400 other people that are going nuts. And uh, it, it was very inspirational. But once you do 100 miles, you know you can do it. And it's always a great thing to train for every year. You know, you, you start out early in the year, you get on your Peloton, you do your spin, you do whatever it takes. And then you gradually pump up to it. So this year, I've done four centuries. And that's basically because I'm retired. <laughs> and I have that little extra energy. The money is raised for uh, the, the AIDS Center in New York. And America is a big place, but there's only two major AIDS centers that help people through um, hospitalization, lawyers' fees, just 
just imagine you have AIDS and it's like, where do I go from here? You know, and it has basically taught me, because this is my third time that I've done the cycle for the cause, how much it takes to um, run a, a place like that. Maybe that's why there's not so many. The stories are heart-wrenching. I mean, they, these people, if they didn't have this facility or these facilities, God only knows where they'd be. All right, well, you know, my life hasn't always been roses and I've, I've had some difficult um, times. My most difficult time was when um, I was coming out of the closet, I was getting settled, and I found the man in my dreams. I found him in AA. Not supposed to do that, but I did anyway. <laughs> it, um, we dated for a while, and we became an item. But seven months into our relationship, he was diagnosed with AIDS. Oh, I can't, I, I, we'll just move on. This is back in the 80s, really didn't have a lot of cure. It was more just kind of like a death sentence. And the hardest time I had with it was he knew he had AIDS, but he didn't tell me. And um, even though we were safe, and as you can see, I'm still alive, uh, he passed away shortly after. And I, I kind of dropped the ball on that. I kind of didn't go to the funeral. I kind of wasn't there. But thank God, I did have friends that were able to say, man, you should go there for his last few days. And I was able to pull it together. And I was able to go in and, you know, say, hey, I forgive you, and, um, you know, thank you for getting me to where I am in my life, and thank you for showing me the things you did show me. And uh, I could see that that put him at rest, and actually, two days later, after we had, I had spoke to him, he had passed away. So that was one of the hardest experiences I ever had, and as I said, I met him in AA. So to stay sober through that experience was very, very tough. But, um, you know, if it doesn't kill you, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Hey, baby! Woo! Rough road, guys! Oh! Mark's energy level is top notch. Um, I don't know how he keeps his energy level, what he eats, what he drinks, but I need some of that because his energy level is always, is always there. I don't think I've ever seen Mark not have energy. He's a strong rider, but he's also extremely compassionate. So, you know, if something were to happen on the ride, you know, he wouldn't make it all about him. You know, he wants to finish the ride, but he also wants to make sure that whoever he's riding with is taken care of. The reason why I really do like riding in groups, I do love people. I do love the camaraderie, I do love talking, and um, it's just, it's just great. It's a great experience. Top of the morning! A lot of people say I'm a positive person because uh, I, I guess I carry myself in a way that everything's going to be okay. A lot of my gratitude and a lot of the way I, 
I, I guess people say I'm uplifting is that I have gratitude. Every little thing I have, I'm appreciative for. I thank, I thank um, the people that um, lift me up. My husband is always there for me, so I have gratitude for that. I actually am living the life I really wanted to when I was a kid. Not too much, not too little, but just be grateful for what you have. And I think once you have that gratitude, you're just, you're just happy 24-7. To me, cycling is freedom.